Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about a turbocharged four cylinder that Stellantis is going to start implementing in a lot more of their vehicles in the near future. Before we get into the video, though, as always, if you can save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. So the engine that Stellantis is going to start producing in higher numbers is a turbocharged 1.6 liter four cylinder that you guys have actually already seen on the main channel. If you have seen any of my reviews with the new Jeep Renegade, this is a powertrain you can get in the Renegade. And it's a powertrain that I actually like quite a bit because in the Renegade, it just makes that vehicle move at a pretty substantial pace and it gives it pretty good fuel economy as well. And so, yeah, I get it. It's a 1.6 liter, it's turbocharged, it's a four cylinder. It's not the most exciting powertrain on the planet, but when it's put in a smaller sized vehicle, I think it does a pretty solid job. So Stellantis is going to invest about $100 million into manufacturing so they can ramp up manufacturing with this powertrain because right now it's only produced over in Europe and so they want it to be produced stateside as well. It's going to be produced in the same factory that makes the 2.4 liter Tiger Shark engine and the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. And I have some good news for you. Because they're ramping up production on this engine, they are going to be ramping down and eventually getting rid of the 2.4 liter Tiger Shark, which, yes, is super exciting because, well, nobody likes that engine. It's a Natchi aspirated four cylinder, and it just, it just doesn't give you solid performance in pretty much any vehicle. They used it in like the Dodge Dart, the Jeep Renegade, and just every single vehicle they've thrown that powertrain into just doesn't make sense whatsoever. Now, if you guys are wondering why Stellantis is investing so much money into producing this dinky little four cylinder, it's because they are trying to basically focus on producing more vehicles with smaller engines, hybrid systems, and well, more fully electric vehicles. Now this obviously isn't a fully electric powertrain, but Stellantis does have plans for this powertrain to be paired with a hybrid system in certain applications. So expect this powertrain to basically have even more performance than what it has already and to get even better fuel economy because Stellantis is all about fuel economy ratings and all about, like I said, transitioning over to selling only electric vehicles. Their goal by 2030 is to sell only electric vehicles in Europe and to have about 50% of their vehicle sales here in the US be fully electric. We will see if that actually ends up happening, but I guess it's a good goal to have. Now, you guys are probably wondering the application of this engine, like what vehicles are going to have this powertrain. And Stellantis hasn't exactly announced what they're going to throw this in, but we know it's already used in the Jeep Renegade, so we can assume that it's going to continue to be used in the Jeep Renegade, and we're probably no longer going to have the Tiger Shark engine in the Renegade in the near future, as in like a year or so from now, which like I said, I think is a pretty good thing to happen. And maybe what they'll do with the Renegade is they'll have like a detuned version. that will have less horsepower and less torque for like the lower down packages with the Renegade. And then they'll have, you know, the higher tuned version uh, with the higher up packages with the Renegade. And that's one of the things you can do with turbocharged engines, just, you know, lower down or crank up the boost basically. Now, another application is something like the Jeep Compass, for example. We could see it in other brands like Alfa Romeo, right? Maybe this engine will be put in like a base model Stelvio, for example, or uh, the Julia as well. Again, there's a lot of different applications, but the biggest thing is most of the applications are gonna be in smaller sized crossovers and sedans that are under the Stellantis umbrella. This engine is probably not going to make its way into larger vehicles like the pickup trucks and full-size SUVs unless Stellantis decides to go the Ford route and release a tiny little unibody pickup truck SUV thing like the Ford Maverick. Maybe they'll do that, maybe they won't. And maybe they'll finally bring back the Ram Dakota and then maybe a base model Dakota would have a turbocharged 1.6 liter four cylinder, but I'm not exactly sure how many people would be uh, excited to go after that. But overall, I think this is a really solid play because I'm a fan of this powertrain. Like I said, I've already driven vehicles with this powertrain and I like how it performs. I like the fuel economy numbers. I can't really comment on the reliability side of things because I don't feel like this powertrain's been out for long enough for us to really have a solid grasp. Uh, but, you know, I would still rather have this over the turbo, or not the turbocharged, the Natchi aspirated Tiger Shark engine. 
Now, I do want to dive into something else that I see potentially happening in the future, and that is in regards to larger sized vehicles like the Ram 1500 and full size SUVs uh, from Jeep and from Dodge, so on and so forth. And that is the fact that we could get a turbocharged four cylinder in these vehicles in the near future, similar to what Chevy has in their full size pickup truck. They have a turbocharged 2.7 liter four cylinder that produces 310 horsepower and then 430 pound feet of torque for the refresh Silverado that was refreshed for the 2022 model year. And well, automakers are seeing that Chevy is somehow selling these vehicles and they're also selling them under the GMC umbrella as well. And they are taking note. And Stellantis is going to be doing a slight refresh with the Ram 1500 for the 2023 model year. And they might do more changes for the 2024 model year. And that might mean the introduction of a turbocharged four cylinder. And well, here's why. So the base powertrain is the 3.6 liter V6 and that engine will still be produced. That's produced in the same factory as this new turbocharged 1.6 liter, for, well, will be produced alongside it because the 1.6 liter isn't produced in that factory yet, but will be in the near future. So we still will have the 3.6 liter V6 uh, in the next few years, at least is what we know from Stellantis. That being said though, the turbocharged two liter four cylinder that is used in like the Jeep Wrangler, for example, is super popular right now. And there is the four by E version, which is just gaining massive popularity since it's been released. And so there is a chance that Stellantis might bridge the gap between the 3.6 liter V6 and the new Hurricane engine in vehicles like the Ram 1500. It's not guaranteed. We don't have a ton of info on this yet, but there is a chance they might do this. And there is another chance that they might get rid of the V6 in the next couple of years once they kind of retool this factory to produce these 1.6 liters. And then replace the V6 with this turbocharged two liter four cylinder in pretty much every single vehicle, including the Ram 1500. So there is a chance that you might be able to buy a turbocharged four cylinder Ram 1500, whether it's just the 2.0 or the 2.0 with the hybrid system in the four by E format in the very near future. And I wanna hear from you guys if you would go for that vehicle. And if you look at it from a power perspective, it actually makes quite a bit of sense because the V6, right, is right around 300 horsepower, 300 pound, well, it's actually less, but, you know, right around 300 horsepower and 300 pound feet of torque, uh, whereas this turbocharged two liter four cylinder has the same amount of horsepower, the same amount of torque, but then is able in a lot of applications to get slightly better fuel economy. And in the four by E setup, it has way more horsepower and way more torque. It's got 470 pound feet of torque and 375 horsepower. And so just so much stronger than 3.6 liter V6 and especially at higher elevations. So yeah, I'd be interested to hear from you guys if you would even go for that or if you just wouldn't even consider a Ram truck with a four cylinder. And with that being said, I'll see all of you in the next video.